Hello, this is an optimization question, but a rather difficult one. It starts off by talking about how you're in the river and you've fallen off a boat. And in your car, you have a change of clothes. Your car is parked on the side of the river and it's your job to get there as quickly as possible. You want to change clothes, you want to get there as quickly as possible. The river bank is uh, eight miles away so you are here the riverbank is here eight miles away you um, you can swim at a rate of one mile an hour and you can walk at a rate of square root of 17 miles an hour strange number but it's there to make the problem come out to be nice integer answers um, from that point on the shore directly north of you your car is four miles away so you're gonna swim for part of it and walk for the other part you could swim that eight miles and then walk the four miles that's an option um, but the, the the one that's gonna minimize time will be you swimming to a certain point on the shore Okay, and you find that point on the shore, which is going to be a distance X away from your car. Okay, and our job is to basically find an equation for time and minimize time. So, but for time, there'll be two different um, times. There'll be the time for the swim and the time for the walk. So, you want to minimize time. All right, great. Um, distance is equal to rate times time. So, time is going to be equal to distance over rate. So the time for the swim will be the distance that you swim divided by the rate of swim. The rate of swim is one mile an hour. The distance that you swim is along the hypotenuse of this triangle. One leg is eight. The distance that you swim, let's call it S. And then we need to figure out the other leg of the triangle. What we have is that this entire distance is equal to four from that point uh, on the shore to where your car is. This distance is four. We call that distance x. The whole distance is four. And so um, this distance here is four. So this distance will be four take away x. So the Pythagorean theorem, 8 squared plus 4 take away x quantity squared is equal to s squared. And then we um, take the square root. That's what complicates this problem. 64 and then quantity 4 minus x squared. We could factor, or let's multiply it out. Let's just multiply it out. We have a 16 minus 8x plus x squared with the 64 on that to give us... Um, the fact that s is, uh, let's go decreasing the order, x squared minus 8x plus 80. The distance swam, s. x squared, plus, uh, I'm sorry, minus 8x. plus 80. Divide that by the rate of swim. This is in miles and this is in miles per hour so they cancel to give you hours. Um, when it comes for walking the distance that you walk is the x miles and the rate is root 17 miles per hour again. 
so that uh, the hours come up and cancel. And that's your time equation. That's the guy we have to minimize or maximize. Uh, in this case, we want to minimize it. So what makes it so difficult is the square there, square root. So we will uh, go to the next slide and work on taking the derivative and setting equal to zero. We have time is equal to the square root of x squared minus 8x plus 80 plus 1 over root 17 times x. So its derivative is 1 over 2 square roots of x squared minus 8x plus 80 chain rule times 2x minus 8 and then the other term has 1 over root 17 as its derivative. If your function f is the square root of g your derivative is 1 over the square root of g times g prime I'm sorry 1 over 2 square roots of g times g prime of x this guy is to the one-half power so we bring down the half take it to the negative half and then we do chain rule okay uh, what we can do is factor out the 2 be left with x minus 4 to cancel with the 2 from the denominator still have this 1 over root 17 here and that is your time derivative Uh, the derivative of time. Okay, we want to set this equal to zero. So we'll have x minus 4 over the square root of x squared minus 8x plus 80 equal to negative 1 over root 17. Or square root of 17 times the quantity of x minus 4 equal to negative square root of x squared minus 8x plus 80. Squaring both sides, 17 times the quantity of x minus 4 squared is x squared minus 8x plus 80. Okay, we have a 17 times x squared minus 8x plus 16. We're going to subtract over the x squared, add over the 8x, subtract the 80 over. So 17x squared minus x squared will be 16x squared. 17 times a negative 8. And then plus an 8x. Let's see the best way to do that. Um, it's like a negative 17 times an 8x plus a 1 times an 8x. Uh, negative 17 times an 8x plus an 8x altogether is a negative 16 of those 8x's and then 17 times 16 minus the 80 which is uh, 16 times 5 factoring out the 16 what happens here that's 16 times 12 plus minus plus and what we could do is take the 12 out of every take the 16 out of everything and we're left with the quadratic that we should be able to factor let's go to another slide if there is another slide there is okay so we have uh 16x squared minus 16 times 8x plus 16 times 12 is equal to zero factoring out the 16 uh, factoring out the 16 we're left with x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals to zero that factors two numbers that multiply to give you 12 and add up to 8 and so um, either x is 6 or x is 2 remember that context of the problem though 
this total distance was 4, x has to be something between 0 and 4. x can't be equal to 6. So x equals 2 is the answer. And uh, that's a place where your derivative is 0 at. Uh, it is a local minimum. Uh, at that place you change sign on your on your um, on your derivative it changes sign um, from positive to, to negative hmm maybe there's a negative sign I, I neglected Well, anyway, um, it's a local minimum. Uh, why is it? Let's see. Somewhere along the way, I maybe lost a negative. If I plug in a, a 2, this is a negative value. Let's check it out. If I plug in... So we have a 2 and we have 6. Remember the derivative is x minus 4 on top of root of x squared minus 8x plus 80 and then plus 1 over 17. x minus 4 on top of root of x squared minus 8x plus 80 and then we add on the 1 over root 17. So this guy, when I put a 2 in, should be 0. And uh, when I put a 6 in, I'll get 0. When I put something smaller than 2 in, it should be negative. Um, after 2, should flip the positive. If you put a 3 in, if you put a 3 into this, should be a positive value. Um, 9 minus 24 plus 80, and then a negative 1. Um, that guy there is uh, bigger than 17. So, uh, maybe it's, hmm, I think that's how it changes signs. <laughs> Bigger denominator makes the whole thing smaller. So, uh, I think that's how it changes sign. Anyway, uh, decreasing and increasing, you found a local minimum. To prove that your local minimum is an absolute minimum, we have to uh, make an argument. Uh, knowing that x must live between 0 and 4, we can make uh, an absolute value chart, I mean an absolute max min chart, where we have the extreme values, and then now we have this critical point in between. Uh, we're throwing out 6 because we don't let x go past 4. And so um, when we plug a 0 in, not to the... We're not plugging into the actual derivative, we're plugging into the function. Remember what the function was. The function was the square root of x squared minus 8x plus 80. Plus 1 over root 17x. If you put a 0 in there. You get the square root of 80, which is uh, 4 root 5. If you put a 4 in there, you get the uh, square root of 16, take away 32 plus 80. So that's an 8. I guess that's an 8. Yeah, 8. Uh, we get 8 plus um, 
4 over root 17. That's almost 1. That's about 9. Uh, this guy is about 9 as well. Square root 81 is 9. When we plug a 2 in, however, we get a 4 take away 32 plus 80. 84 take away 32 is um, yeah, 52, square root of 52. And then we add on to that uh, 2 over root 17, something that is uh, about a half. Root of 52 is uh, a little more than 7. So let me write it down. So that's about uh, about seven and a half. So there's your mint. You proved it. Uh, another way to prove it would be to take the second derivative. It's very difficult with this problem. You saw how trouble it was to, to deal with the first derivative. But you could uh, show that the second derivative is always positive. Oh, uh, geez. Yeah. That means that the function, um, by doing this, you should be showing that the function is always concave up. And if you're always concave up, like a cup, that local max you found will be the absolute max. The function never has a chance to come back down below that. The local min you found, sorry. The local min, in that case, turns out to be your absolute min. You can't turn back down to get back below it. But that's trouble, though. Showing that second derivative is always positive trouble. I mean, it was, it was bad enough trouble with what we have already. Um, but this is worse than that. <laughs> okay, great.